Well, hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Müller. I'm the head of communication and network technology in Bosch Corporate Research, and at the same time, the general chair of 5G ACIA, the 5G Alliance for Connected Industries and Automation. And I have the pleasure to tell you a little bit about industrial 5G today, so where we currently are, what remaining challenges uh, exist, and also what our future perspectives are. And as you can see from the slide, so this is a Bosch presentation, not a 5G ACIA presentation, since there we do not have a consensus view on the long-term perspective of industrial 5G yet. So 5G has the potential to become the central nervous system of the factory of the future and to lift industry 4.0 to the next level, um, enabling unprecedented levels of flexibility, efficiency, productivity, and also ease of use. But at the same time, it's also a very special application domain. So in many cases, we have very demanding quality of service requirements. So for many industrial applications, we need very low latencies, high reliabilities, for instance. For others, we need high data rates. If you think of HD cameras uh, that are connected using 5G. And this also shows that we have not only a single use case with a single set of requirements, but many different use cases with very diverse requirements, which also have to be supported in many cases at the very same time. The good thing is we don't need a nationwide network, but we need only a local network, local connectivity with this um, performance in a very controlled environment. So inside a factory, inside a plant, which allows uh, specific optimizations and makes certain things easier. But we also always have brownfield um, deployments in many cases. Uh, that means we have to live what we have in place today. So that's typically wired communication. In some cases, it's Wi-Fi and similar wireless stand solutions. And we have to be able to smoothly integrate a 5G network into this existing infrastructure. There are also special security requirements and security concerns. Production data is very sensitive. There are established ways how to secure a system. Um, we have the concept of zones and contweets, for example, and also this has to be made compatible with what 5G brings in, which has its own established ways of securing things. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters in manufacturing really is costs and is a return on invest. So no manufacturer will deploy a 5G network just because it's nice to have 5G but you will always do the math and determine the value add that the 5G network brings in and also compare it then to the costs and you need a significant return on invest in order to make this investment. Also, it's a B2B business instead of a B2C business. So that uh, comes along with various changes in the ecosystem, of course. But in general, we can say there's also a lot of value to be unlocked. And the reason for that is because simply a lot of value is generated in manufacturing. And at the same time, as I mentioned before, we only need local connectivity to unlock this potential. And that makes the industrial domain very attractive from the um, investment versus gain perspective. So, but of where are we currently on this journey? Um, so the developments towards industrial 5G started about three years ago, I would say. And in the meantime, it really has become a hot topic. Everybody's talking about industrial 5G. It has become a focus topic in standardization in 3GP. And some key capabilities already have been standardized, which I will briefly outline on the next slide. We also made good progress um, in the ecosystem development. So we've established the 5G Alliance for Connected Industries and Automation two and a half years ago, which serves as a global forum for bringing all relevant stakeholders together and for driving industrial 5G. And we have 76 members today, which includes major players from the telco industry, but also from the um, industrial domain and also, of course, some universities and so on. And of course, we have seen the advent of non-public networks. So for the first time, it will be possible for a manufacturer to deploy and operate such non-public networks inside a factory, which are to some extent decoupled from the public networks. Um, so this enables then a lot of new choices now for how to use 5G and also will trigger a lot of innovation because they can be targeted, tailored solutions and services now, especially for these new um, application scenarios. So many things have happened already. If we look at the standardization timeline, this is what you get. So the first uh, version of 5G, release 15 uh, of 3GBP has been approved um, mid last year. 
uh, and it still had a very strong focus on consumer application and enhanced mobile broadband. So if you buy 5G today, this is what you get. Then really 16 has for the first time had a very strong focus on industrial applications. This has been approved in June this year, and it includes features like ultra-reliable low latency communication, non-public networks, time-sensitive communication. That means uh, support for time-sensitive networking, TSN over 5G, and also native layer 2 transport so that we don't necessarily need the internet protocol, but we can directly transmit ethernet frames over a 5G network, which again is very important, especially for the industrial domain. Release 17 is currently underway and it will come along with several enhancements um, of these features. It also has a stronger focus on positioning, which is again, very important in manufacturing because knowing where things are is a very valuable information. And it will be in this new transmission mode called NR RedCap, uh, which is somewhere, somewhere in between this high-end mobile broadband uh, mode and also this low-end uh, massive machine type communication. And this might be especially suitable for um, industrial sensors, for example. And then, of course, the journey will continue with release 18, which is still um, being defined, but with a high probability, I would say it will more focus on massive IoT applications. That means tiny little sensors, for example, which have to be um, connected using very low energy and low costs, um, and that is the natural next step then. So many things have been done already towards supporting these industrial applications. But if you look at factories today, there are only very few of them which already make use of 5G. And that's because there are still some challenges to be overcome. Some of them are listed here. First of all, having the features in the standard is nice, but they also have to be implemented in the chipsets and the infrastructure components. And that still takes take some time, especially if we consider that release 16 is the first release which really has many of the features that make a difference to the industrial domain. Then we also need performance validation in real world industrial environments. And of course, these environments are different from the classical office spaces, for example. Um, and that's important because you have to have a sufficient level of trust in the performance in a real factory. And we need real business cases. So as I mentioned before, at the end of the day, only the ROI matters. Defining a use case is very easy, but defining a real business case with a positive value add of 5G, which is higher than the cost, that's a real challenge and some more work has to be done in this respect. Then also smart integration. So as also mentioned before, how can we securely and smoothly integrate a 5G network into the existing ecosystem, the existing environment? And we need also a functional market ecosystem. Um, so we have to overcome somehow the chicken egg problem that exists. Um, the question is, will there be first some factories equipped with a 5G network, or will we first see 5G-based automation devices hitting the market? One doesn't really work without the other, and therefore someone has to make the first step. Um, and this is exactly the chicken egg challenge that we have. In addition to that, there are some other concerns that I would like to briefly outline here. So it's, of course, the costs, um, which are still too high as of today in many cases. And this includes the equipment costs, operational costs, and also IP licensing costs. Also, the complexity is very high. So a 5G system is still more complex than a Wi-Fi network, for example, and also than the wire systems that they have in place today. And we have to somehow bring the complexity down and also the operational complexity. So why is it so much more uh, complex to operate a non-public network compared to a Wi-Fi network, for example? And there's a lot of potential to achieve that, for example, by offering optimized solutions, especially for the different vertical domains, and also especially um, targeting at non-public networks. Also, there are some new security threats coming up, such as jamming. So we have to have a plan how to deal with this, how to mitigate the risk. And here the benchmark is not 4G, the benchmark is wired communication and in some cases Wi-Fi. And we have to ensure and be able to check the trustworthiness of such a private 5G network. Because manufacturing is a very sensitive area, production data is very sensitive, and that's why you want to be sure that you can fully trust your network. Also there are challenges on the standardization side. 3GBP is very um, complex standardization body, very resource intensive. Um, if you look at who is engaged in 3GBP, it's only the big telco players, basically, and only very, very few vertical representatives. Uh, and therefore we, therefore, we should think about ways how to reduce the complexity and how to make it easier for verticals to directly get engaged. 
Also, there are challenges on the regulatory side. Spectrum regulation always has been highly fragmented in different countries. It's now getting more serious if you look at these vertical applications, because industrial automation, for example, is always a global business. Domestic markets are typically too small. And therefore, the need to really come to a globally harmonized solution is even more um, uh, is even higher than, than it used to be before. And finally, on the energy consumption side, there's still some room for improvements from our perspective. For many industrial IoT applications, but also IoT applications in general, the energy consumption is still too high. And therefore, we should think about new ways to optimize that. Maybe if we have special devices, which are not so much targeting at the public networks, but maybe which are specifically optimized for non-public networks. So if you now look a bit further ahead, um, what may come with beyond 5G and 6G systems, um, I've put together here the top 10 aspects from my, aspect, uh, from my perspective, which are relevant here. And it shows you also a little bit our vision of what 6G will be all about. So it should be IoT first. Previous generations have always primarily focused on mobile phones and connecting people. Of course, more and more M2M applications came up, but the main focus was always on, on people and on phones. And with 6G, this should change so that really the IoT is the primary application that should be considered and that should be optimized for. The same holds for the non-public networks. So that's something new now with 5G, but with 6G, this should be in the center point of all considerations from the very beginning so that there can be many tailored um, networks, smaller networks for specific applications. And that's probably where the potential um, of beyond 5G and 6G at the end comes from. We should make use of network automation to reduce the complexity to operate such networks, for example, to ensure high ease of use. And there's a lot of potential here. So maybe most of the innovation with beyond 5G and 6G system doesn't come from the user plane, but more if we look at the management plane and the control plane. And network automation certainly is a key component here. The same holds for the openness and modularity of the system. So the developments in this direction have already started with Open Run, the telecom infra project, and so on. And we think that this should be continued so that we really have a highly modular system with well-defined interfaces in between so that you can easily combine different building blocks from different vendors. And that's then an enabler to trigger innovation and to stimulate competition. And that's, of course, always nice from an end user perspective. We also should continue the developments towards a tightly integrated connectivity compute fabric so that the boundaries between the connectivity infrastructure, the cloud, the edge cloud, are basically dissolved so that more and more computation, for example, may be done directly in network devices and so on. So there's still some more potential to be unlocked here. Also 6G will come on along with new functionalities, integrated sensing, for example, so that we can use a 6G system uh, also for radar applications, for a material inspection in a factory, also for activity detection so that we can detect if, um, if an accident has happened or something like this. And one of the most important points from my perspective is that we should also start really doing a holistic system optimization. So 5G has been optimized basically in such a way that it becomes as good as a cable. Um, and if we do it like this, then we don't have to change the application. But today, applica today's applications are like this because they were relying on a cable and knew exactly what they can rely on. But if you now do a joint optimization of the application and communication, then there is still more potential to be unlocked. And that's really something that we should do when talking about 6G. Of course, there will also be the shift towards higher frequencies to unlock large bandwidths and to also get inbuilt security due to the high penetration loss at these high frequencies. Uh, the cost optimization should be a major design criterion from the very beginning. And also, we should think about a new approach to centralization, as I already mentioned before, to make it easier for vertical industries to get engaged. So this might require a change of the working procedures in CGBP, for example. And with that, I'm already at the end of my short talk um, about industrial 5G in a future perspective. Um, I think as Bosch and the vertical industries in general, we jumped on the 5G train a bit late. Um, at the beginning, we were not quite sure what it means for us and uh, how relevant this may become for us, but then we recognized the potential. And I can say we've come to stay. So now 5G will not disappear anymore. And at Bosch, at least, we have the ambition to also be part of the 6G discussions and developments from the very beginning. 
So therefore, we would be very happy to have these discussions together with you and to jointly shape and drive the developments also towards 6G. With that, I'm at the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank <laughs> you.